In this video, we're going to look at methods for synthesizing alcohols using either addition or substitution reactions. And the vast majority of these rely on the nucleophilic nature of the oxygen atom in water. So of course, water, H2O, is a great source of the hydroxyl group, provided we can pull a hydrogen off of water. And the way we generally do that is through some kind of direct or indirect deprotonation of H2O to either generate hydroxide or generate a hydroxyl group after the oxygen of water has already coordinated to an electrophilic position. Within the category of addition reactions, we find reactions of alkenes where the elements of water, H and OH, add across the alkene. The first is acid catalyzed hydration, and this exhibits what we call Markovnikov site selectivity. You've probably seen this reaction before in your Organic 1 course, and the idea of Markovnikov site selectivity is that it's based on the stability of the carbocation that forms. So acid catalyzed hydration uses catalytic hydronium ion, usually a catalytic amount of a strong acid like HCl or H2SO4 is used, along with large quantities of water, might as well use solvent quantities considering how abundant water is. And Markovnikov site selectivity in this case refers to the fact that the hydroxyl group ends up bonded to the more substituted position in the starting alkene. So in this example, we end up with a tertiary alcohol with the hydroxyl group linked to the tertiary carbon and the new hydrogen linked to the CH2 carbon in the substrate. More details on this reaction can be found in my Chem 2311 playlist as well. To achieve anti-Markovnikov site selectivity in cases when we want to append the hydroxyl group to the less substituted position, we have to use a nucleophilic source of hydrogen rather than an electrophilic source like an acid. And the way this is done is through the use of boranes. Thanks to the very low electronegativity of the boron atom, the polarization of the BH bond is opposite what we usually expect with a partial positive charge on the boron and a partial negative charge on the hydrogen atom. This leads to the opposite site selectivity of acid catalyzed methods in what's called hydroboration oxidation. And this is a two-step process in the first step, we treat with the borane, and this can be as something as simple as BH3 using tetrahydrofuran or THF as solvent. And this forms an organoboron compound, which we then oxidize in the second step through treatment with H2O2 and, for example, sodium hydroxide. The product that results from this two-step sequence is the less substituted of the two possible alcohols. And so the hydroxyl group ends up linked to the CH2 carbon in this example, and a new hydrogen becomes bound to the more substituted carbon of the starting alkene. And notice the contrast with the example above. Here we formed a tertiary alcohol with the hydroxyl group linked to the more substituted position. Here we formed a primary alcohol with the hydroxyl group attached to the less substituted position. One more example that, that's worth noting because it attaches a hydroxyl group to an alkene through an addition process is cohalogenation. In a cohalogenation process, we treat an alkene with a halogen, and this leads to kind of the classical start of the halog halogenation process for alkenes, but we also use large quantities of water or some other nucleophile in the reaction mixture. The resulting product is a 1,2 halohydrin, and this is a compound with the halogen atom attached to the less substituted position and the hydroxyl group attached to the more substituted position. If we focus on the hydroxyl group in this process, we can see that this is essentially a Markovnikov type process. Note the analogy to the first reaction above. The hydroxyl group ends up linked to the more substituted carbon. The nice thing about this cohalogenation reaction is that it installs an alkyl halide in addition to the alcohol group, and we can do additional chemistry with the alkyl halide, for example, nucleophilic substitution reactions. Alcohols can also be synthesized through substitution reactions, and these are generally nucleophilic substitutions with respect to the carbon that the hydroxyl group becomes bound to, because again, water is acting as a nucleophile in these reactions. So, so nucleophilic substitutions that take advantage of water or hydroxide as the nucleophile lead to the formation of alcohols. One example is the SN2 reaction of primary alkyl halides with hydroxide, so something like a primary alkyl bromide if we treat this with, say, potassium hydroxide in some solvent, the hydroxide will displace bromide and the resulting product will be a primary alcohol. 
The alcohol needs to be primary because of restrictions on the electrophile in SN2. This is a single step concerted process, and so the nucleophile OH- approaches the electrophile in the key elementary step, and for that to happen at an appreciable rate and to avoid side reactions like elimination, the electrophile has to be primary. Of course, secondary and especially tertiary alkyl halides in the presence of water can undergo an SN1 process to synthesize alcohols as well. I haven't shown that here, but it's worth keeping in mind as well. An alternative synthesis of alcohols starts from ethers, and I'll just, to keep the discussion simple, use an ether with two primary carbon groups linked to the central oxygen. And the idea here is aqueous acidic cleavage. So we use, again, acid. I'll often write H3O+, plus, but this is usually some amount of a strong acid like H2SO4 or HCl, which forms H3O+, plus in the reaction mixture, and large quantities, solvent quantities of water. Upon treatment of the ether under these conditions, the ether oxygen is protonated. Compare this to a protonated alcohol. It's very similar. It's just got two carbon groups instead of a hydrogen and a carbon group. And then we've set up a good electrophile. We've turned this carbon, for example, into a good electrophile, and that can be attacked by water in an SN2 step, and the result is two equivalents of the primary alcohol. So in essence, what has happened is the hydroxyl group has substituted for the alkoxyl group in the original substrate, and that substitution produces a molecule of RCH2OH and kicks off a molecule of RCH2OH as a leaving group. One thing that's worth noting about this process is that it's best for symmetrical ethers with the same groups connected to the ether oxygen, so that we end up with two equivalents of the same alcohol. If we end up with a mixture of two alcohols as the products, those can be difficult to separate. 